Here's example two with integration by parts. So in the last few videos, uh, we talked about where this formula comes from um, and why there's no arbitrary constant on the V when we get it from DV. Uh, we did an example with an indefinite integral. So now let's go ahead and do uh, example two with uh, a definite integral. So integration by parts uh, can be used for definite integrals also. Um, and it's really, uh, nothing's really different. You still choose U the same way. So we also talked about how to choose U uh, with this Liate rule, or however you pronounce that. Um, so uh, choose U to be the first type of function that appears on this list here. So start at the top, work your way down. And um, in your integrand here, uh, whichever function uh, you see first, choose U to be that. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and do this example here. So we want to integrate uh, x times the sine of x dx from zero to pi. So x, uh, that's an algebraic function, right? And sine of x, that's a trig function. So which one appears uh, higher up on the list here? Um, so logs, inverse trig, algebraic, trig, and exponential. So algebraic functions um, and trig functions, that's what we have here, algebraic and trig. So algebraic appears higher. So we choose u to be the algebraic function. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we do is we say uh, u equals x, okay? So once we choose u, okay, here's our u, then dv is automatically everything else, including the dx, okay? So since that's u, then everything else has to be dv. So uh, dv <coughs> has to be uh, sine of x dx. Okay. Uh, so if u is x, then du is dx. Okay. And uh, if dv is sine of x dx, then v, so what we want to do is integrate that, and that's going to give us a uh, negative cosine of x. And again, no arbitrary constant, um, even though we are integrating uh, indefinitely, there's no arbitrary constant, uh, and that, that was explained in a previous video. So let's go ahead and evaluate this integral then. So um, integral from zero to pi of x sine of x dx. Okay, so it's still the same exact formula, integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du, just we have limits of uh, integration now. Okay? So this is still uv, okay, which is x, times negative cosine of x. Okay. Um, but now since it's definite, we uh, evaluate from zero to pi. Okay. So uv, okay, this is u, this is v, uh, minus the integral of uh, v, which is negative cosine of x, uh, du, and du is just dx, and integrate from zero to pi. Okay, so when you do a definite integral with integration by parts, it's the exact same way. Um, just uv is evaluated from 0 to pi, and the uh, integral v du also is uh, integrated from 0 to pi. So that's really the only difference, is just the limits of integration, but the formula is still exactly the same way. Okay, okay so um, let's go ahead and work through this. So this, uh, let's simplify this a little bit here. This is just uh, negative uh, x cosine of x uh, evaluated from 0 to pi. And then uh, minus negative, so that's going to be a plus, so let's say plus integral from 0 to pi of uh, cosine of x dx. Okay, so that simplifies things a little bit for us. So now, um, okay, let's see. So let's go ahead and keep the minus sign in there. Uh, or let's, uh, let's not, let's do it like this. So we'll keep the minus sign out, so it'll be minus uh, brackets like this. Okay. Remember, this minus just means to like, multiply everything by a minus 1, so it's just a constant multiple, so we can pull it out of the evaluation. So this is going to be minus... Uh, evaluate at the top, that's pi times the cosine of pi, uh, then minus evaluating at the bottom, so let's spread that out a little bit, okay. minus uh, 0 times the cosine of 0. Okay. And now uh, here, uh, this is going to be plus, if we integrate the cosine of x dx, that's going to be sine of x. Okay. And we're evaluating that from 0 to pi. Okay, so negative still out here. Uh, pi, it's just pi. Cosine of pi, remember from the unit circle, the cosine of pi is the, uh, co so cosine is like the x coordinate on the unit circle, and uh, pi is at negative 1, comma 0. Okay, so cosine of pi is negative 1. And then uh, cosine of 0, who cares what that is, because it's uh, being multiplied by 0. Okay, the cosine of 0 is just 1, but it doesn't matter because it's being multiplied by 0. So this whole thing is just uh, 0 over here. Okay. And then this is a uh, sine of pi minus sine of zero. Okay. So what do we have here? Uh, negative pi. Okay. So this zero's uh, gone. Nothing's there. So this is negative pi times negative one. The negative cancel each other out, and that's just pi. Okay. What happens over here? Plus sine of pi minus sine of zero. What is the sine of pi? 
Well, the sine of pi is uh, 0. Sine of 0 is also 0, so remember those from the unit circle. So this is just pi plus 0 minus 0. In other words, just uh, pi. Okay. So um, what we just found out was, uh, through integration by parts, was the integral of x sine x dx from 0 to pi uh, equals pi. Okay. And that's it. So again, uh, another point to, or again, the, the point uh, we want to make here is that if you use uh, integration by parts for a definite integral, it's really the exact same formula. You just have limits of integration. So you evaluate uv from 0 to pi, integrate this guy from 0 to pi. So uh, in general, the formula would be something like uh, this. Integral from a to b of uh, u dv equals uv evaluated from a to b uh, minus the integral from a to b of v du. Okay, so really, uh, it's just the exact same formula, just with limits of integration. And remember to evaluate uv from a to b. So over here, we evaluated uv from a to b, x times negative cosine of x from 0 to pi. So that's example two with integration by parts uh, with a definite integral.